PM. Uh, I'll still wait for my computer to do what it's supposed to do. Okay. If you wish to speak on an agenda or non-agenda item, please sign up at the sheet near the entrance door to the council chambers. You'll be called to speak during public comment section. Comments or testimony on agenda items listed in a public hearing, public comment will be taken at that time. Roll call, please. Okay. Dick Anderson. Here. Riley Hoagland. Here. Deanna Hinton. Here. Judy Casper. Here. Susan Walke. Here. Kip Ward. Here. And Mayor Don Williams. Here. Thank you. Will you please all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you all so much. Um, we had a couple of uh, things move from uh, in special order of business that are under consent agenda. Um, it, Ron had asked me to pull because they weren't noticed or ready or. Yeah, well, there's some there's some technical difficulties we had, and so items number one uh, from the consent agenda, and then numbers eight, nine, and ten. Uh, under item I, special order business, we'd like to deal with those at a later date. Any motion? I so move. Second. Motion, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And then we had a discussion about uh, under I-11 and I-12. Yeah, in the case of those, um, th there were attachments for each of those applications. And they were, or they were the applications that were the attachments. But for a reason I haven't quite figured out, they did not show up in your packet. Um, if you would, uh, if you'd like to go forward based upon the recommendations from the counselors that interviewed these candidates, that would be fine. Or if you would like to wait until you we fi fix this glitch and you actually see the application, we can do that as well. My question would be to Mr. Apicello: Any issues with appointment this way? Um, Generally, I think you all like to see the applications before you actually make the decision, so it's up to you. Well, we received them in the last packet, correct? I'm not sure. No? Okay. I don't think so, Mayor. Okay. I think this well, is the first time we've the council. Out. I'm comfortable moving ahead. But. Mr. Mayor, the question I would have is can the uh, people who, counselors who interviewed, share information with us on the candidates? That would be. Sure. But it might be in the end. Absolutely. Application, that'd be fine. So Parks Board applicant Camilla yeah. Harlett? With that, I'd say let's keep going. To okay. I have yep. my notes, and yep. I can show those. Yep. Well, okay. And then for uh, Matthew Max Horton, we'll okay. share those later, and we'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. We'll move to those later on. Thank you very much. Okay, then we're going to shoot right to comments from citizens present on agenda and non-agenda items. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to bring to the council's attention any item not listed on the agenda for public hearing or public comment. Comments are limited to five minutes per citizen, and the city recorder will use the light system. Speakers may not yield their times to others, and as a general rule, this is not a time for exchange of questions. At the conclusion of this agenda item, a councilor may discuss or raise questions regarding an item presented by a citizen. The mayor has the authority to reduce the time allowed for comment in accordance with the numbers of persons present and signed up to speak. I have no sheet. Anyone signed up to speak? Anybody? Nobody? Colleen or Allison, somebody? No. Shannon Locke, okay, Shannon. Roads End. We have a runaway problem in Roads End, and I'm not sure which way to direct it. The tansy ragwort is out of control. The yellow weed that's very invasive, uh, it would be good to get a handle on it. It's kind of blown up from the county property that's between Liberty Inn and Road's End, when that was logged, it became quite 
covered with tansy, and it's since migrated down into the estuary area across the street from the State Park and Roads Inn, and is actually have pictures of it I'll send you at some point, but almost completely covered that over. Of course, now it's gone to seed, so it's a difficult thing to deal with, but there, I think there are remedies, and I would just encourage City Council to think about addressing that in upcoming budget, or maybe there's something we can do to find out more about what the best practices are for removing it. I know other communities have similar issues. I really appreciate it. It spread really quickly, so um, I think we could still get a handle on it. It's a pretty big weed, so thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so I guess I'll take this moment to ask um, I guess Mr. Apicello or Mr. Chandler, what is the city's purview? I, I think you're talking about uh, outside of the city limits, uh, and That's so right. we never did incorporate that. I would. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll email the county attorney if in fact we're talking about outside the city limits right. which I was thinking it was Logan Park we're talking about right, that's right, yeah. um, then I think I'll contact the county attorney and see what remedies the county may have for this kind of a nuisance okay, appreciate that and you, Shen, you may want to contact uh, someone at the county I just said something that um, Shannon also mentioned that it started at the um, Logan Park development area and then but now it's in the um, wetland in the pond area and that's within the city that city owned property so and I believe our public works department does uh, do some removal and abatement of that so that's I'm getting a nod from public works sure. director okay so we're on it then thank you I have nobody else signed up anyone who did not sign up wish to speak seeing nobody thank you very much okay uh, and maybe we'll get out before 11 tonight. Uh, public hearing, public comments, none. Ordinances. Ordinance 2017-05. Um, <coughs> Your Honor, Council, this is, uh, well, I'm going to start with, uh, before I do the reading, I'm going to say I, I've been notified that in Section 2540, um, Okay, 254 of the ordinance, which is section 9, having to do with the Drip Driftwood Library. Um, the term librarian appears, and also the term director appears. My understanding is it's the library director, not the librarian, although we have some old language that I failed to remove. Um, so I'm going to uh, indicate that in 254060, the the language there, board, chairperson, and secretary. Uh, that section stays, and the word librarian that uh, appears there should be changed to library director. Uh, so the library director shall serve as secretary of the library board and keep a record of its actions. In addition, um, under the powers and duties uh, 254070, um, the uh, number three, B3, making recommendations to the library director on program development. And I may have missed one. The, there's a change in 2.06100. Um, can you tell me what that one was? That was. Um, oh, the Oregon Revised it says Statutes? It Oregon State Statutes, and it should say Oregon Revised Statutes. Oregon Revised Statutes. Okay, so with that, um, I'll, I'll do the reading. This is the first reading of Ordinance Number 2017-05, an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code, Title II, Administration and Personnel, amending Chapter 206, City Appointed Bodies, adding multiple new sections to clarify appointment, rules, responsibilities, and actions of the City of, of city Appointed Bodies, adding a new chapter 266, Community Sustainability Committee, amending several chapters to remove redundant provisions, including chapter 208, Planning Commission, chapter 212, Building Board of Appeals, chapter 214, New Business Incubation Committee, chapter 218, 
Vacation Rental Dwelling License Appeals Board, Chapter 220, Parks and Recreation Board, Chapter 224, Visitor and Convention Committee, Amending Chapter 254, Driftwood Public Library, Amending Chapter 264, Arts Committee, Adding a new Chapter 268, Transient Lodging Tax Review Committee, Amending Chapter 304, Transient Room Tax, Adding a new Chapter 214, Committee on Citizen Involvement, and Adding a new Chapter 270, Budget Committee. Uh, ask for approval of first reading. I so move. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, I think it's a roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. Wolke? Yes. Ward? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. And Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Your Honor, Council, this is second reading of Ordinance 2017-05, an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code, Title II, Administration and Personnel, amending Chapter 206, City Appointed Bodies, adding multiple new sections to clarify appointment, rules, and responsibilities and actions of City Appointed Bodies, adding a new Chapter 266, Community Sustainability Committee, amending several chapters to remove redundant provisions, including Chapter 208, Planning Commission, Chapter 212, Building Board of Appeals, Chapter 214, New Business Incubation Committee, Chapter 218, Vacation Rental Dwelling License Appeals Board, Chapter 220, Planning and Recreation Board, Chapter 224, Visitor and Convention Committee, amending Chapter 254, Driftwood Public Library, amending Chapter 264, Arts Committee, uh, adding a new Chapter 268, Transit Lodging Tax Review Committee, amending Chapter 304, Transit Room Tax, adding a new Chapter 214, Committee for Citizen Involvement, and adding a new Chapter 270, Budget Committee. Ask for approval of second reading and adoption of the ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Casper? Yes. Wolke? Yes. Ward? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. And Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Thanks, Jermaine. Yes. I just want to say thank you to um, the city attorney for I'm sticking with this. It's been a long process to get us to this point, and thank you for all the revisions throughout that entire process. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, uh, Ordinance 2017-16, the Nelscott Neighborhood Plan, although it's on the agenda, um, we need to continue it to the next meeting because there was an error in the terms of the uh, Nelscott Neighborhood Plan being pr provided to the Council. So. Um, if I can just ask that you continue this uh, first reading to September 25th, uh, we can pick it up then. So moved. Second. Motion a second. I don't need to roll call on that, right? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. I'm sorry, I didn't ask for discussion. If anyone wants to say something about it. No? Okay. All right. Uh, resolutions. Resolution 2017-17, a resolution of the City of Lincoln City authorizing and directing the sale of city-owned real property. Okay, this resolution we have discussed in the past uh, as part of our uh, discussions concerning workforce housing, and uh, we have been instructed to look at um, disposing of some properties. Uh, first, to actually, we were instructed to look at properties to see if they were developable as workforce housing, and then if they weren't, to look at the idea of putting them up for sale. We've identified uh, 10 parcels. Uh, that uh, that are identified in the resolution. There has been some discussion about uh, removing two from that list. If there, uh, if you would like to do that, then in your um, motion, you would just make a motion to amend the resolution to remove those items. Yes, is that 51st and Hostetler Park? Are those the two? No. Oh, no, this does not include hostile Park. Questions or motion? <coughs> Question. I, I have a. Please. Sorry, I just I have a motion, and um, maybe then we can discuss a little bit further. Well, or do you, you want, want to talk about it first? I just okay. want, would that be okay? You guys have questions, okay? Yeah, I just want to identify the two properties we're specifically talking about. Um, I think I might be able to do that. All right, go ahead. Um, the first property was, uh, and this is one of the alternative motions, tax lot 061135CB100. Uh, um, that's the Northeast Salisee Drive. I believe uh, Councilor Hinton is interested in removing that. 
and I believe Councillor Hoagland is interested in removing the 1149 Southeast 3rd Street, which is tax lot 0711, 15 AC 6500. And then, so I believe those are the two that are an issue. Is it okay to move forward, Mr. Anderson? Were you good? Uh, okay. I, if I could ask a question first. Um, I was also hoping um, to sell um, part of the um, Third Street property to pay for, to use the proceeds to pay for the parking lot um, for sell a seed, but I'd ask, like to ask Councillor Hoagland, um, or is there a partitioning of that property, or how c can we accomplish both? Well, if you were to sell that property, uh, we would partition it because we do have uh, a building on that, that w and we wanted a main access to, to the, the creek that's back there. Uh, so we would partition to keep the, uh, that would be the east uh, uh, portion of that property. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, it really at this point becomes a decision of the city council as to whether or not that property is, is sold or stays. We're going to discuss the pros and cons. Well, I have a motion then we can discuss. Okay, I have a motion. Um, I move to approve resolution 2017 17, but amend it to remove the property on Salisbury Drive um, with the tax lot um, 061135 CB 100 and to direct the necessary proceeds from the sale of the third street property tax lot 071115 AC 6. 06500 to fund the construction of the parking lot on the Salisbury Drive pro property. Not hearing a second. Okay. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Oh, yeah. You got to read the motion. Oh, yeah. Pull your mic closer. Say second. Okay. Motion. Second. You second it, right? I second it, yeah. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure we picked up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I've got plenty. <laughs> well, you go ahead. Well, my question is, if, and correct me if I'm wrong uh, in what I heard, you're asking to pull it from sale so we can sell it. How are you gonna, what proceeds are you going to use for third then? I, I guess I'm lost. Just pull the Salisbury Drive property. Right. And then, oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, my motion is to pull the Salisbury property from the list. And then to use the proceeds from the sale of the Third Street property to fund the um, necessary work that needs to be done to construct the parking lot on Salisbury. So you want to hold off selling it until we do the work, and then sell it, or sell it and keep, or fix it and keep it? Keep Salisbury, and then move that off, off your thoughts there. Not keep it, but keep it off the list. Pull it off the list so it's not for sale. So the city continues to own. The city own, will continue to own Salisbury. And then before I kn knew about um, um, Riley's idea about keeping third during our work session, we talked about that that would be for sale and was suggested that, that the proceeds from that, would, would, however much is needed, from the sale of Third Street could pay for the construction on that Salisbury property for the parking lot. So then I get a question to you, Ron, is, is it necessary to designate where funds come from to do that? You can do that in this motion, but ultimately you would need to amend your budget to account for the revenue and the expenditures. So which would, necessary which would require a public state, hearing. Is it necessary to even state that or just pull the Salisbury? You could do it either way if you want to. Which is easier? Which makes it happen? <laughs> um, if if you put it, if you put it in your motion that you want to use the funds from the sale of any of these properties for a specific item, uh, then that, then the staff has been instructed to begin to prepare the budget amendment and go forward with right. that. Good enough. That was my discussion. Mr. Mayor, yep. uh, just a, a question um, of Mr. Chandler, if I can. Um, is it po possible and feasible to keep one of these properties, uh, I guess specifically 
uh, sell um, on the for sale list and just not actively market it until we get more information about the feasibility of that specific lot for a, in this case, parking lot. Yeah, what you're actually doing tonight is declaring them as surplus property so that we can sell them. If you don't want us to, to proceed, uh, if you want to declare it a surplus property, uh, but don't want us to proceed with it, we can do that as well. So let's see with the sell of it. So I guess what I'm, Mr. Mayor, uh, what I'm trying to get is um, this is a, certainly a public process of declaring properties, um, but if if so that we don't have to come back, you know, in the future and bring one of these back for example, um, but not, what, what bothers me about this property being pulled off is uh, we have no idea of its feasibility or cost for a parking lot. And um, I, at the work session, we've kind of indicated that would be a nice thing to have um, before we proceed. And um, so I'm willing certainly to uh, put it on hold, not actively sell this property, but I want to make sure that's something that can go go along with this. I, I guess the only thing that legal I question. the only thing I don't know how to do this, and our attorney will probably need to answer it, is that if you declare it as no longer a public purpose, but want us to hang on to it, that's fine. But I'm not. I've never undeclared property, uh, so I'm not sure the process that you go through to undeclare it is surplus property. The resolution you have in front of you. Uh, tells you there's a couple different ways to proceed. One is you can say the property's not necessary for public use. The other is you can find that it furthers the public interest. If you look at this resolution and what you know this was built on was a determination that it would further the public interest uh, that the sale of the funds, sale of the properties would build funds for workforce and affordable housing projects consistent with the city's 2017 housing needs analysis. So when I was presented this, there was a rationale proposed for this sale that we were going to build funds to develop workforce and other housing. The, the motion on the floor uh, seeks to earmark funds from sale of one of these properties for a different purpose, so that's not recognized in this resolution. We'd have to change that. Um, I understand the rationale. If you sell one parking lot, you logically spend the money for the, that that you achieved getting selling that parking lot to build a different parking lot. But again, you've got a resolution in front of you saying it furthers the public interest because we're going to use this for uh, affordable housing and workforce housing projects. Um, you're, you're not necessarily hanging your hat on the not needed for public use angle if you say furthers the public interest. If it is needed for public use, you really shouldn't be selling it. Um, so I, I guess I, I think you could, it would be best to pull it if you're not ready to make a finding about it today. So just, just I, I think if you remove it, um, for, as it was in the proposed motion, just remove it from the list of properties to be sold, then you can take your time and figure out if it's feasible to put a parking lot on it. And then the function, you know, what we have to do is we just have to come back at a later time and do one of these resolutions to declare at that time that it furthers the public interest to dispose of it. Um, I guess I, that would be my recommendation. I, I don't know, yes, you can, pass a motion that it would earmark the funds if you wish to do that. Uh, but that, it's always subject to the budget process. So you can make that motion, but it's still going to be subject to that budget process. So. And in here, that would go to amend the motion? Too. Sure. I, I think I should make it a little more simple. So I would amend it just to pull the, um, to approve the resolution, but to pull the property on Salisy Drive. Mr. Ward? I'll have, I have second that motion. Okay. So, motion, motion second. Discussion? Do we have to take the first motion off in order to. It's just been amended. Okay. So, I have some. Please. So, the, 
the southeast third is used and is in interest of the public because it is a parking lot that does get used and you know I don't think that selling one parking lot to build another parking lot which you don't know isn't you know now that that's gone that's not an issue but there's a pump station there I think that's a pump station right and it does get used I happen to live in that neighborhood I get to see all the parking all the cars parked in there it absolutely gets filled up and then so I think even on those non kite festival days or those really high tourist things if we had a sign at the river saying hey four minutes away is another parking lot would help alleviate the pressure around Kylo's around that subway the the motel right there that always gets jammed up with parking like I think there's a lot of overflow you know kind of dangerous parking in that whole air area because they simply don't know that you take a left going down third street and there's a parking lot right there I think that's um, not advertised as well as it can be and it absolutely gets used before I lived in that neighborhood on those days I would park you know I would park there to walk to D River I mean that's that's how I got to D River because I knew that it would be packed but now I just walk there from my house but um, I think it's absolutely an overflow parking lot absolutely is needed and should be pulled in the best interest of this the, of, of the people from being surplus property so I'm against voting for your motion you didn't amend it to take off the southeast third all we're voting on now is our yeah. just the south we're moving on Right. Actually, right. There. but that would make it for sale. Then that's and, what I'm and saying. He's, I, he would want this to be added. I want it not to be pulled. for sale. Correct. Correct. Which you amended it just to take off South Sea. So I'm voting against you in your motion. Shall I amend again? Well, only if you agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> if you like your motion as you made it, if if I could just his opinion, he doesn't want it. Just correct one thing: is that you can sell property that is needed for public use if you find that it furthers the public interest. Now, in this, in this case, you have a property that has a city pump station or some facility on it, plus a city parking lot. So certainly, and because it's subject, we need a partition, a portion of the property will, will not be sold because it's needed for public use. Uh, and your argument is that we need the parking lot for public use as well. And so what you're really saying is the motion should be or what you would be, what you would be interested in voting on would be a motion that approved the resolution taking removing two properties the Salisy property and the Third Street property. That's correct. Mr. Mayor. And just so I'm clear, I think I heard you say southwest, but you didn't mean the southeast. Southeast. Right. southeast. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. If I said southwest, I apologize. I would like to amend my motion further. Your Honor, yeah. maybe it, it would be that. best to withdraw the motion, yeah, yeah. withdraw the second, and start over. Okay, I would like to withdraw my motion. Withdraw the second. All right. May I start again? You certainly may. Thank you. Um, Or Mr. Hoagland, if you'd like to make the motion. I'm ready. Okay, do it. I move to approve resolution 2017-17, but amend it to remove the property properties on 1 Salisee Drive, tax lot 061135 CB100, and the Southeast 3rd Street property, tax lot 071115 AC6500. Second. Motion to second. Discussion. Hearing none. Roll call. Wait, can I be a little bit? Please, go ahead. Well, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I don't have the, the document in front of me. Thanks. I can read. Um, but there's that piece of property that's on south uh, west, I'm sorry, north northwest, maybe 14th. It's right where you get that, go down to park the cars. There's a little. Is that what that is? 
That piece of property that we own that's next to the motel? That's not on this list. It's not on the list. Well, a good thing, then. <laughs> we checked. <laughs> I got nothing for you. That's urban renewal property. Right. Got it. I was mixing apples and oranges. Sorry. Anything else? Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Walkie? Yes. Ward? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. And Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your patience on that. Okay, uh, special order of business, wastewater vehicle purchase crane truck. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So we have, um, we've budgeted this year for um, a crane truck in the wastewater department, it's for our collections department, but it's used by really all departments and quite a bit at the wastewater plant too. And so it's um, a truck with a flatbed on it and it has a crane on the back that lifts pumps out of our pump stations. And without it, we can't maintain our pumps. And it's actually been red tagged for quite a while. So we um, had it budgeted for this year at $85,000. And so our Recommendation, let's see. My, okay. Our staff recommends council approve the purchase of a wastewater department train truck, crane truck, can't say that, in accordance with the government contract purchases from Gresham Ford and Pacific Trucks um, Colors. And it's an OPRN contract, which means it's a state bid. So it's the, the best price that we can possibly get on that. And the truck itself is $84,235. And it's an F550 um, 4 by 2 equipped with a stellar um, T-Max V2 painted white with hydraulic outriggers and um, plus the crane. And then we're looking at an estimated surplus of the old equipment at $4,000. Um, and then we have um, an explanation of the procurement of goods and services, which I won't read all of that, but it's there just for your information. I have a quick question. It's confusing to me. It says this okay. vehicle were, would replace a 1997 Chevrolet C3500 HD flatbed with a crane having 61,918 miles on it. Yes. The flatbed or the crane? <laughs> the, um, the flatbed. Okay. And then it says in 4,033 hours, which I'm assuming is the crane. Totaling yes. 241,980 miles. Yes. I don't understand. That's because they sit running. It's like a, a generator. You know, you can look at the run time or, or the age. Um, and the crane? Or the well, no, you're, you're looking at the total miles on it because it run, the truck runs while they're using the crane. Okay. I so it's running. The so the miles and the... Got it. Like the police don't vehicles. Right. Okay. Right. It, Similar no to similar to our guzzler and you know different TV vans, different equipment like that. Okay, and I'm gonna see if I can uh, guess what Mr. Henderson's thinking is. <laughs> is there a way that we can share this with anyone? Is there a way to uh, not be the exclusive owners of this property? Well, it's before we how often are you using it? All the time. Okay. Yeah, all we the use time it. We use we use it. So I have the wastewater. Um, the wastewater plant uses, they fight over it. So the wastewater plant uses it on a quite regular basis. So when the collection crew isn't using it, um, they go back and forth. And then it's also used for the water department. Okay, and so we've been at a real, week. we've been at a real loss without not having it right now. Because we've waited, we've, we ended up having to red tag the old one that just essentially red rotted meaning, away. Red tag meaning? Meaning you can't use it anymore. Okay. We so don't we've been speak without government here. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that answers my question. Right. Thank you. I have a question, please. Yes. When was the 1997 vehicle purchased? 
in 1997, I'm oh. sure. So if, if you take 4,033 hours divided by the last 20 years, divided by 12 months, divided by four weeks, it's, it's like four hours, four hours a week? Um, but you use it all the time? Well, we, we do. We have it at the wastewater plant, the water plant. So I'd have to come back with those those figures. Yeah, I just did 4,033 yeah. divided by 20. Yeah. I didn't ask. Take that divided by 12. Take that divided by 4. And, and that's four hours a week. So yeah. I'm just well, curious if it's all the time, but then is it so really So if you have to rent this equipment, it rents for a very high price and it's not available yeah, here? I imagine. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's... Yeah. yeah, if you can. I, I would <laughs> have to. There are there really aren't any available. We've been trying to, you know, rent them while we're while this vehicle is waiting to be purchased. Cool. For me, and, and Lyle, this is something that I've struggled with with a lot of requests, and I'm sure it's legitimate. I don't. I mean, the numbers are reasonable to me, but we're getting more information here than is in mm -hmm. here. And you know, okay. I would love to be able to say, okay, we've looked at the rental costs. Here's mm -hmm. what it is. Okay. It, it makes it a whole lot easier to not only make a decision, but also to explain to the constituency why we had to buy this. Because I can say, right. hey, here's the reality of it. Okay. Otherwise, I'm just going, well, I hope she's telling me the truth. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it, I'll bring it are, back to you. And it's, it's helpful. you know, I didn't get that from um, Willis, our vehicle maintenance person that puts these together for me. Yeah, and, and so, just as a recommendation, because I think it's, as it moves through departments, it makes perfect sense to you. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone else, it's like, yeah. But then it comes to us, and I've got to explain it on the street level to right. folks who don't deal with this every day. Okay. And, and I really, it is so helpful to have that information. Right. I'll follow. I'll follow up with that after this. Yes. If okay. Um, so, if there's no more questions, I guess we're looking for a motion. I move to approve the purchase of a wastewater department crane trap for eighty-four thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars. Second. Motion to second. Discussion. Yeah, I do have one question. Who do you get that from? Where does that type of vehicle come from? Um, it comes. It comes actually. This one was from the. Um, let's see. Do you have a I've custom made, or is it just a standard crane? No, they have to put it together. So it'll be about four months before we even get it. But it's Gresham Ford and Pacific Truck Colors under the. Um, let me give no, the actual name. It's. Um, I'm, I'm good. Okay. That's it's OPRN, good. which is the. Um, Estimated. Let's see. There, there actually are state. It's a state of Oregon procurement information network, okay. OPRN, and so those are the, you know, best prices that you can get. Like IT gets billed by different departments. Would the use of this multi-department truck be billed accordingly, or is it like how how would that look as far as who gets to use it? on the books. Is yeah, the majority of the use is wastewater and wastewater collections and the wastewater treatment plan are all under the same budget. Oh, okay. okay. So. But if in the event we needed a crane for something, it yes, they, the city could say, Absolutely. Hey, we, we, we do that across the board all the time with the backhoes, every, yeah. almost every piece of equipment. Okay. Yeah. And then one follow-up, if I may, what are we doing now and until that vehicle arrives? Um, we're standing by. We're going to wait wait and um, you know if we have if we have a real issue then we'll bring a truck in from outside okay but see that's my concern is that I've just been told that we're using it non-stop and it's they're fighting yeah. for it but now four months is okay and it's no big deal well it is a big deal and so we will have we will still probably have to rent something in the meantime okay again that was yeah it just didn't it's so helpful to hear that okay or read it I'll, I'll make sure that. Don't you, mean to I'll, I'll, I'll make no. I'll make sure you get a follow up on it. All right, it. appreciate May it. May I ask a question, please? I don't know how to ask this in, in not a direct way, but what took you so long to come and ask? <laughs> well, I, it was I budget. I can answer that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's there's two part processes. First of all, is the budget. So we got into the new budget. The second of all, the second the first of all is the budget. We had to get into the budget. But then the second is that it originally came to me. And, but it's beyond my purchase authority, and so we, um, so there is, so we brought it back to put it onto the city council agenda, and that's why it's before you. It was a, it was a, um, a bit of an error on part on our part where they, where it was thought that I could sign off on it, but it's beyond my purchase authority. So it took some time. So it took some time. 
Well, that's for another discussion time. <laughs> I still am not in favor of your your self-imposed limit. I, I'm not yeah. at all. But that's for another night. Any other discussion? No? Okay. Hearing none. All please. Ward? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Folkland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. Wolke? Yes. And Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Lyle. Appreciate it. Okay, discussion, new urban renewal area district formation. Do you need a screen? No? Okay. Hello, Mayor and Council. Hello. Um, so this is really w uh, per your request. When we had a, an economic development work session, which was July 24th, uh, you all had asked staff to bring back a timeline and process to form uh, another urban renewal district. And um, so you were aware of what the process was and then to direct staff if you would like to proceed with exploring that idea. Um, basically, the information is outlined in your packet. I can go over it at whatever detail you'd like, but it'll take about a year and a half. Um, the process is um, with staff reports, with pros and cons of different areas, and um, determine what your interest is, establish a district boundary, and um, develop a project list, do outreach to taxing districts, and, um, and then after formation, typically it's about three to ten years before there's funding available. Uh, sometimes that can happen shorter. Uh, based on new legislation, but we haven't done any of that sort of thing for our current district. Uh, we've basically done bonding and then paid the bonds back. So um, if we were to form a new district or new districts, then we would um, have the opportunity to do things differently and more currently with more current um, legislation. So I'm here to uh, answer any questions that you might have and just look to your direction. If it's of interest to either have a work session or have staff bring back more information to a city council meeting. Um, is there a, a map available? Did I miss it somewhere in the... There aren't any maps here because uh, I didn't want to have our staff team invest a lot of time in doing maps if it wasn't of interest to, to okay. explore it. Yes. So, I remember leaning away from the kind of restrictive mapness of a, you know, a urban renewal, and being told that the economic development department is that the right word, which we just funded in this last budget committee season, would allow a more broader uh, appli you know, applicant pool of things that could happen. So the question is, is that these bonds that are issued to the Urban Renewal District, could those be applied or applied to, applied from, I don't know the word, but applied from the Economic Development Department, could they apply for those same bonds? And if so, would that have a less, you know, not a three to ten year time frame to have those funds available? Uh, with Urban Renewal, it's, it's really a separate thing than the city budget. Um, the reason why we're here talking to council about this is because council is the one who makes a decision of how to form or what to form. Um, in that case, if you wanted to proceed, it would be out of the city's economic development budget that would go to the consulting services to pay for establishing a district. Um, with the bonding that Urban Renewal uses, it's a completely separate thing. I'm sure you've heard me um, pipe in at different conversations about urban renewal is separate. Um, so, so the bonding really is a discrete thing. It's, it's a tax increment financing tool and it is an economic development tool um, that the city is uh, within its authority allowed to use to fund projects that would likely happen slower over time or not happen at all. So. It, it's really the reason why we're talking about it is, is just because it is a tool that's available for the city's economic development objectives. So, Mr. Could, Mayor. so could that be applied by the economic development committee? Mr. Mayor. Yes. 
I think if I might just, I think there's a clarification in what I believe you're asking. Sorry, microphone, but, uh, but what I believe that Council Oakland is asking, can the proceeds from the current district be used to create a new district? That's not what I'm asking. That's not what you're asking. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. What is, what is the other title that you hold? Um, I, I'm, I don't really have a title. I'm working in economic, economic development. development. Mm -hmm. That is called the economic development department. No, economic development is part of the urban as part of the, this being done by the urban renewal employees. It, I, I understand it's being the work is being completed by the urban renewal employees, but this new economic development is a now city funded function, right? It's a separate item in the budget, yes. Right. So separate than urban renewal. Separate from urban so renewal. So my question is, is all the things that urban renewal does, the bonds, everything like that, could that also be done by the economic development by itself? The, everything the same, no. but done by economic development. No. Um, the reason why urban renewal or TIF districts, tax increment financing districts, exist is because they can do things that a city cannot do. So um, they can assemble property, they can sell property for different amounts that a city cannot. Um, there are just different things that are allowed by urban renewal that are not. Um, it's really your mechanism to do leveraging of money with other private partners. Separate than the city. Separate than city. So there, there's absolute crossover. Um, when we talked about creating the budget for the city's economic development, it was to talk about things that were citywide rather than focus specifically on the current urban renewal district. So, yeah. So we can say this particular area of the city needs more help or has different issues than the rest of the city, than the rest of the economic development could apply funds for. So these areas need another funding tool. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope I answered. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to, uh, just one second, I, I hate to step into parental roles here. <laughs> I'm worried for your daughter. Why? She's, she's starving. No, no she's tipping she's over in the chair. I don't want her to fall off of that. She'll right. she'll, she'll, she won't. Uh, if you could do me a favor she'll and not, really if you could once. sit on the chair, that'd be great. Thanks. Because <laughs> uh, all I'm doing is watching that, <laughs> yeah, waiting for the tumble. She, Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's go. I'm sure she'll take care of it. <laughs> Thank you. If she starts crying, it'll be all right. Go ahead. She looks okay. Um. <laughs> Okay, Mike, back to the urban renewal district. Um, I'd be in favor of a work session because um, right now it just seems like a black box to me. I'm not quite sure parameters or parts of the city, or and I know we've had some discussion about it, but I'm not comfortable with just moving forward with something. And so if we did have a work session, would you have information available for us to look at specific areas in the city and ideas of what that would mean and what type of bond it would mean? Could you give yeah. us some more direction? Yes. Th this is really just um, per your request. You asked for process and timeline. And so that's what this is. And then cost is also in here. And so with you understanding that it'll take a year and a half to two years to create a district and the cost is about $30,000 with an additional 25000 if you decided to explore doing a second area at the same time, then we can absolutely have a meeting that's more in depth and I can go into greater detail about what a TIF district is, how it works. Um, of course, you've seen the, the end of how it's worked because our current district was set up in 1988, so we've had a long time we're at the end of that district. Um, I can give you more information about what we've done in this district, but um, more so some ideas about where you might find it useful to fund other projects in other parts of the city. I think that'd be helpful. So. Uh, no, please. Mayor, I'd, I would agree um, to advance this, um, uh, and I think a work session uh, makes sense. Uh, looking at the schedule, pretty well la laid out. Uh, certainly the, um, I'm assuming, House and the, the cost um, consulting fees probably wouldn't come into play in that until further down. Um, I'm assuming you could um, give us or have in mind a, a couple of areas that might be legitimate or to be explored uh, urban renewal districts. Yes. Uh, we be before we 
engaged consultants or yes we would just talk conceptually about where there's need and where it might work and then you all would have to decide at a formal council meeting if you want to make a motion about actually proceeding with consulting and creating a district so yeah I'd, I'd say that'd go a long ways to moving this forward okay and I just have a, a quick question and we can take this up at a work session later um, you said outreach to taxing districts can you give me an explanation yeah. There, there's a requirement in creating a district or even doing an amendment to an existing district, which we have done a few times, and that is to what they say, this is government speak, but confer and consult with your taxing districts. So we go into a lot of uh, depth about what the financial projections are and what the impacts would be because the way... To who? To the overlapping taxing districts. Right, but who is that? Who is that? Who we do have, you go to in particular? Yeah, we have 10 of them. So, so it's all the... Um, all the elected officials that that oversee those taxing okay. districts. So it'd be county commissioner, it'd be city council, which is kind of silly because we'd be talking to you about Look what you want to do. Bill. But um, yeah. 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 I, like, again, and uh, just so everyone's clear, I, I know, but I'm asking the questions that I'm going to get. Sure. So I, again, I just want to kind of yes. lay it out so people know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. so it's I, the fire district, Devil's Lake Water Improvement District. Uh, the county, the school district is reimbursed by the state. So although there is a, uh, a take from urban renewal from the school district, the state uh, reimburses that. So there isn't any impact to the school districts. Um, I can't remember all the other ones, but. Health district. Thank you, health district. Fire library. Mm -hmm. So this will have a big impact should we move forward on, on a lot of people Yes, and they it, should start paying attention to this. Yes, absolutely. It's something to pay attention to, and um, we want to be completely transparent and accurate about what those impacts are. Uh, the there are pros and cons, and so um, we'll have those outlined, and we can talk more about those. Thank you. Anyone else? Then we're going to make a motion, or just let it roll. Or I move forward. I move to direct staff to hold a work session to explore new urban renewal areas. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? We don't have to give a date certain, Mr. Apicello. No? Just okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, and let's see. Okay, seven. We're still doing seven. Authorized city manager to city manager to execute professional services agreement with FFA architecture and interiors for Lincoln City Police Facility Project. You have before you tonight a revised uh, version of the scope of work um, as uh, prepared by um, FFA architectures and interiors uh, and based on the discussions that we had uh, on Tuesday during Tuesday's work meeting. Uh, I be able to answer any questions if you have those. Motion. I move to authorize the city manager to execute the professional services agreement with FFA Architecture and Interiors in the amount of eight hundred and seventy seven thousand five hundred and ninety one dollars with a ten percent contingency or an amount not to exceed nine hundred and sixty five thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? Mr. Mayor? Please. I have three things. Um, one is that um, the request um, that I made for some lead equivalency language, um, I think we're losing our city manager. I'm looking for that. <laughs> I'm listening. I know it's in it's in the list, and the answer that AFF gave to that question is sure they can do that. It's not in the scope, and when we were talking about it, I was asking that for it to be in the scope and to make that adjustment up front rather than making it be a change order later. Okay, on the um, first page, uh, the, the question for you is: Is this sufficient? Uh, the very first highlight uh, in yellow, it says the A and E team will track the project using lead guidelines. A specific lead equivalency target will be identified in, e in the early phases of the project. 
So the question for you is, is that sufficient? Trying to catch up. Sorry, I closed it. Based upon whose determination? It's on packet page 84. You had other questions? Yeah. Um, sorry, I lost track of it. Um, and the other one was the percent for art. I don't think we quite finished that discussion. And then the third was the 9.1 earthquake ready. They said that they're, they go to the, you know, the building standards and it's a little bit stronger for a building like a police building. But he, I didn't feel like my question was answered that because we are expecting in the next 50 years, 40% chance of the big one, which is a 9.1, will it withstand that? And I, I don't feel yeah, like I've been answered. The question that uh, they gave in, in response to, to you, the answer they gave in response to your question is that is two parts. Um, first, they build up to the standards that are required for public buildings for earthquake standards. Right. If you want to go beyond that for either an earthquake or a tsunami or something else, then they are happy to do that, but it will be an additional fee, and that fee is not spelled out at this time. Yeah. If you would like them to propose an amendment to this for that additional fee, I can ask them to do that. That's what I thought I, had, I was asking before, because I, I think, because we know this is gonna happen, and quite frankly, um, because we're building the building with that knowledge, if we don't do it, that's not a good service to our communities. So. Uh, ultimately, that would be uh, something that the council would need to instruct us to do because it's different from the scope of work in here. If you would like to add that onto it, that's fine, uh, but that's up to the council collectively. Mr. Mr. Mayor, just a question of my own on, on that. But would that not fall under that category of getting input from the community and then remember it then looks at our budget so that they would give a price and balanced with our budget so you know we have a budget that we've talked about for this and so you know I, I think it would behoove us in our sessions with the architects the the counselor um, bring that up and put it in, I mean, I, I think that's how we do, because we're trying to keep it in that, what, $9.5 million, $10 million budget. So, w which, heck, we could hang draperies on the walls, you know, if it fits in there. Um, so I, I, I guess I'm, I'm not as concerned about uh, this changing the scope at this point, or the agreement because we've already, you know, we, we get additional chances to input our desires. And I think yours is valid. I, my reasoning for asking for these three things to be kind of figured out up front is because if you add it on later, it's gonna cost more. Add it on later, it's gonna cost more. They haven't done anything yet. And they right, won't do but anything. it's not in their scope I'm of work. Interrupt. Just a second, guys. We're not going to do a work session here. Uh, if you have a question, get the chair's attention. Do you are you finished with what you had to say, Mr. Anderson? Sounds good to me. Finished. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't mean to stop you, but I just I don't want to get in the back and but forth here at the council meeting. Okay, so uh, I, I totally forgot where we are. We have a motion and a second. We're still in discussion. Thank you. Anything from you, sirs, madam? Yes. Um, on, on phase one under scope of services, is that phase one scope was removed. I guess it was staff initiated, but it cost $10,000. And so I wanted to know at, at the back of the packet, it says zero, but the total amount is still 800 and some thousand dollars, which is inclusive of that 10,000. So 10,000 didn't really turn to zero. I think it's $10,000 less. I believe it was $887,000. Okay, because I thought I compared the two and they were the same numbers, but okay. So that's something you can verify? I can verify that. that and, okay by you? And my other question was we added two more, um, I guess, meetings. 
there were 12 meetings and now there are 14 meetings so I don't know if phase one was really removed but anyway Did you check that for us I'm, I'm checking to see if I can find that now anything else Councilor Casper um, my concern is that when we I mean this is a uh, an opportunity a once in 50 year opportunity and um, um, I found the the, the, um, the report not the report but the, uh, the re I guess the report that he gave us uh, difficult to understand and there's a learning curve there uh, for the average layman and uh, uh, it's going to take some time before the council uh, gets uh, even with the staff and uh, part of my concern is the staff has exclusively worked on this project without the city council uh, so the the council is pretty far behind as far as understanding how these things work and Right now we're working on uh, a staff or administration down concept and I would really prefer to see a community up um, so we get the, uh, the community input should be one of the first things that we have. And um, so, um, and I, I think it's important that the, the community uh, move at the same pace as the council as the staff do so that we all have equal information that we all have understanding and that our input actually has a chance to be input into the process so um, that's my concern um, just to take something off of uh, city managers plate it was verified yes the ten thousand dollars was removed but we still have two extra meetings yes so you have still work to do Council Anderson is a Questioning look. Um, I, I thought I was listening to Councillor Ward, but I don't know what you said. Uh, your your concern is the public and council, everybody being involved in this process. Yeah, it's Short, a community so. process. We're talking about community policing. That makes it a community process. So, and I, I agree. H how's that impact this agreement? It doesn't. I just just since, put since it out the motion on the table is to sign the agreement or not I that that's all right well, well maybe we want to have another workshop before we sign the agreement I'm just this is a chance for for people to well, talk and, and and air their opinions mayor I, yeah. I'm still I, I'm I, and I apologize I'm not trying to be argumentative I'm trying right. to figure out what it is that your concern is because my understanding of our agreement with these folks is they have a huge amount of outreach to the various communities mm -hmm. of which should uh, hopefully satisfy your concerns and get people involved it, it depends but we're not going to have those until we sign the agreement that's right but it, it depends outreach is, goes two ways one where you involve the community and they actually have input that matters that has a chance of being considered and the other is having community or output that just simply tells the community what you've done and explained it and out of the two I prefer a more organic style of, of doing business than the way that I see the plan on this even though there's a lot of meetings it was difficult for me and I'm sure maybe the other counselors to even understand what was being proposed uh, again, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I'm going to have to argue with you, Mr. Ward, because they weren't proposing anything. They, well, they didn't write it out, out for sport. I mean, there, there, there was a reason it was given to us. At our work session, we went through the scope and different processes, and they were very clear, at least for me, and on their PowerPoint that showed where they gather information, and all that is long before any scratching on the napkin or schematics happen or floor designs happen um, so I, I'm, I'm just not understanding your concern because 
I, I do understand your in desire to involve the community. Applauded. I don't understand how having a work session. I mean, we've hired these folks. We uh, have this, yeah. this consummates hiring these folks, and um, I mean, if we have concerns, certainly this is the forum to have to air your concerns. That's what I'm doing. Okay, and so I thank you both for your, your input and your mm -hmm. thoughts on that. And good. Anyone else? Okay. Here we go. We have a roll call. Did you what, a motion? Yeah. Do we need a motion second already? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Motion to approve this agreement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who Ready? seconded it? It was um, Susan and seconded by Councillor Anderson. All right. Ready? Please. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. Walkie? Yes. Ford? Yes. And Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you much. Okay, we went over eight minutes. Ten, we're at uh, request for appointment. Parks Board applicant, Camilla Hartlett. Councilor Walkie. Um, Maybe I could start. Um, we'll just, um, we, we had a uh, schedule discrepancy. Um, we kind of missed each other in the night on the, on the, at the appointed time. Um, so Councillor Walkie has physically interviewed uh, with Ms. Arlett. I'm just going to give my recommendation simply based on the, the strength of her uh, credentials and, and application. And she had, I interviewed her in person on um, Thursday, August 31st. Um, she has a very strong application lots of community involvement. Um, she's lived here in Lincoln City for two years. Um, her, her sense of community and wanting to help was um, reinforced by the meeting I had with her. Um, she's Highly recommended by our references, and I hardly recommend her for appointment to the Parks Board. Yeah, and normally I wouldn't uh, do what I'm doing tonight, but it was just it was one of the strongest applications I've seen. I had no no qualms whatsoever. So, motion. I move to appoint um, Camilla Arlett to the Parks Board. Second. Motion. Second. Discussion. It. Oh. Go ahead. Two, two vacancies. Is that, is that I'm yeah, trying to remember? One withdrawal? Yeah, yeah. So um, we're filling one one of the two vacancies, and there was only one applicant for for that? Yes. Spot. Yes. Sole applicant. Right. I do. Okay. Um, I just have a question. Does she have a background in um, working with or volunteering with parks boards before before she moved here she or is it just a personal interest I don't it doesn't matter particular. Um, she was a ski instructor and um, ran a um, summer bike program at a ski area um, Right, and that's what is a strong outdoor connection. Uh -huh, right. Um, also has been involved in some other um, um, volunteer programs. Anyone else down there? No? Oh, yes. I'm going to abstain from voting. Okay. So, motion to second. Discussion is over. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Yeah. Councilor Hoagland abstaining. All right. And. Uh, Request for appointment to library board, Matthew Max Horton. Um, Councillor Casper and I um, interviewed Mr. Horton on Tuesday, August 29th. Um, he has background in
Yeah. <laughs> um, and he is a, a current volunteer at the Driftwood Public Library. Um, very involved in publications for many, many years. And he's very enthusiastic about um, what an inspiring library we have. Uh, he's, he's very proud of this library. I think he's a great advocate. Okay, so looking for a motion. I move that we uh, accept the nomination of Matthew Max Horton to the library board. I'll second. Motion to second. Discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you very much. We are yeah. broken here, yeah. I had one other um, comment about committees, if I could stick Please. it in here. Um, I noticed that the budget committee will have three openings as of the end of the year. And I know last year we didn't start advertising until the, the end of the year, and it was hard to get those appointments made before the budget committee. I'm hoping that we can start that process a little earlier this year. Okay, um, city manager, city attorney report. So I have three things. The first is from the uh, Cascade West Council of Government. I'll just read this. Um, the Ca uh, Cascade West Regional Consortium is organized a, as an American non Oregon nonprofit corporation. The CWRC mission is to address community and economic development opportunities and barriers while concurrently working for environmental and social good. The primary focus of the CWRC has been wetlands mitigations effort and work while continued addressing wetlands. At its January 20th, 2017 meeting, um, the CWRC approved amendments to its bylaws. These amendments included broadening the economic development focus and changes to its members, membership composition, which now includes all of the Oregon Cascade West Council of Government membership jur member jurisdictions. The Council of Government Board of Directors approved that amendment at its May 17, 2017 meeting. As a member jurisdiction of uh, the Council of Government, you may appoint a primary and alternate member to the CWRC board. Those have traditionally been city council. Those have been city council members. And I apologize. You said you had three. No, there's two: a primary and an alternate. Oh, member. okay. 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 What would you like from us tonight? Uh, selection of an alter of a primary and an alternate member, so I can report back to the. Okay. Any folks. nominations? Um, Mr. Mayor, Ms. Walkley, do you have any other information on this? Since you're the contact representative, uh, cause I can tell you from the area of uh, commissioner on transportation, nothing's filtered down for the right, right. council of governments. And. Um, no, I don't have any further information. I apologize. I don't understand what it is that there is it wetland uh, or is it economic development? I, I, I can't tell you more than that's what I've read. Uh, I don't understand it. Both. Huh? Both. Well, then perhaps a clarification before more information. More information? Because I don't hear anyone jumping up and saying, yeah, so maybe that would help. Okay with council? Yeah, okay. Good by you, Ron. I have two other items, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I know you said three. Okay, there you go. First is a reminder that uh, tomorrow, uh, this is from the Samaritan North Lincoln Hospital, we invite you to celebrate with us at the ceremonial groundbreaking for the new Samaritan North Lincoln Hospital. Program begins at 3.30 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, September 12th, main parking lot. Um, 3043 Northeast 28th Street. Um, so uh, just make that note for your calendars. And then one other calendaring item is that uh, your next scheduled work meeting is for next Monday at 2.30. We have two agenda items that are on that. The first is uh, of the branding campaign that we have been working on. 
we will be giving you a presentation with some ideas and some uh, for both logo slogans and updates on on the branding uh, information. If you're unable to be there, um, I can send you that the information. They they're they're updating a PowerPoint that they will be using. And the second is that if you recall earlier in the year, um, you had instructed the staff to look at uh, the plastic bags with the idea of uh, banning those, and we will be giving you a report on that as well. Thank you very much. Ms. Giacocello. I have nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, da, 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 actions of base, any based on work session or executive session? We have none. Additional comments from citizens present on non-agenda items? Anyone care to come up and say a word? Seeing none. Uh, mm -hmm. Announcements or comments by city council? Mr. Hogan. I recently was able to visit the 500-year-old tree at Cape Perpetua. There's a little half-mile um, hike there from the visitor station. You pay a fee and you go walk this along this creek and you see this 500-year-old tree. And it's very nice and, you know, it's for great. Well, we also have a very old Sitka spruce in Lincoln City and nothing is around it. There's kind of no selling point of it. There's nothing like that. So I would like to ask to see if we can do something similar to that of like, hey, just so you know, there's this beautiful playground and right over there, four minutes away, <laughs> is a 400-year-old tree. You know, the, the hike in Cape Perpetua, you know, had to go up and down and it's dirty and muddy and all that stuff and it's not necessarily that way and I don't know who maintains that park in Regatta Park or, you know, what the deed restrictions are and all that stuff, but um, it's right here or it's right here so I mean I think it'd be a great it's a great thing to put out there and I've you can't even look to see where can you go see a 400 year old tree I mean there's just not that kind of information out there but we have it and so why don't we say hey for those of you that want to see this humongous tree it's right here in Lincoln City well as we don't have a parks director yet is it something we could ask Mr. Chandler to Investigate. I mean, there's is upkeep on it. I mean, some of the some of it is clear back, and I don't know who does it. Right, but you're talking about signage and something. Pathway, so something. It, it counts anything in the discussion. Council and say, hey, Anderson, you have something down there. Well, my always my immediate thought is, you know, we we have a parks committee, and we have a chain of command of where parks, you know, goes to. Um, plus, we're also as a city, we're a tree city. Um, planning might be able to give us more information of, of what that means and maybe there's a category under being a tree city that um, would assist in that recognition kind of stuff That's great. Um, I mean yeah. still put I'll it back on Ron's shoulders to just at least find out who and what and bring it to us yeah. that or just give it to them you know? right. I mean, it's, if they're interested yeah I mean I, 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 I'm up for anything that's you know information as far as this is concerned you know so you good with that Ron good with it? sir okay anyone else up and down the line Councilor Walkie I'm oh, sorry oh. please no the, yes well, one more go ahead please the work session times from being 2.30 not being at 2.30 and to see I know before it was you, know, you guys voted on it but you know I'm working at that time and if there's if you guys are interested in having it another day at a later time, you know, I think also people can't attend because they too are working at that time. And so it limits the public participation or the public um, being able to be in that and, and relying solely on the video part of it. So I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying. So if I can, Mr. Mayor, is. Is Monday a bad time or is the 2.30 a bad time? 2.30 is the is, So you right. need to move something off to more non-work hours? Correct. It, after 4, after 5? After 5. After 5? And any day of the week? Correct. So I, personally, I, I'm more concerned with getting you there um, because the work sessions really aren't open to the, they're open to the public. There's no participation. Um, so whether they watch it in person or video. But I, I would be interested in getting you there. So what's your, do you have a day, time? I, no, I'm, it, if I'm gonna say, 
Yeah. Do. A after five o'clock, um, any day of the week is fine. Obviously, Monday or. It's so, do, if if we stay with Mondays, then well, trying to yeah. stay with Mondays. Yeah, correct. That would be fine. So next Monday at what time? Five fifteen. Yeah. No. Yes. I, yes. Could we make it five sixteen? Which clock? <laughs> no. That's or is five thirty? I don't know you. I just assume. Five thirty. Ruin an evening, then ruin a midday. So. Okay, works for me. Is that good by everyone? Okay, I got that wrong. Okay. Do we have a limit on this? I mean, five thirty to uh, approximately two hours. two hours. Couple. Yeah, hours? I think that's something too. Uh, we were going to talk about at some point about since we had that marathon meeting about establishing limits for our time, but. Uh, I guess I'm going to let everyone have their say first, then we can bring it up. Uh, Councilor Walkie, you were done? Councilor Walkie? Councilor Walkie? Okay. Um, excuse me. In late July, we had a woman come talk to us about her water being shut off. Um, has that been addressed? It has. Thank you. Her water um, stayed on. Did I, her water I, stayed on. Can I interrupt one second on that? Uh -huh. Um, cause, and we had a private a citizen come forward and, and offer to pay that. And, That's correct. And they, he did pay that himself, right? That's correct. Yeah. And there was one other item that was taken care of by the owners. Very cool. Thank you. A very giving community we have. Um, wondering what the situation is at Northwest 35th Court and parking on the beach. What are you asking? Has there been any further discussion with state parks? Um, I know there were some problems. The last communication that um, you mean as far as prohibiting parking, as far as far as people driving up and down the beach. The last communication I have as far as parking, uh, driving down onto the beach, that will continue. Um, we have we have notified them though that uh, we have had problems of people going beyond the boundaries of where they should be. It's also dangerous when they enter and exit the beach. That's not good access point. Okay. May I follow up on that question? Uh -huh. um, so I've just been kind of following that one on the peripherals. It's up to the state to say whether people can drive their cars on that beach. There's the section of road that leads to that point. Is that still a city street, or is that a pub? Or is that under the state's control? Because the city say, no, you can't drive your car here. I do believe that the access to the beach, that drive access, belongs also with the state and, and, and how it is regulated. Okay, and then we cannot create a barrier on our own to that access. Not that I'm aware of. Scrapatello? Um, I, I, I guess it depends on the particular access. So I'm not sure whether or not we have a deed to that or it's a right of way. I think we'll have to look into that. Okay. I'm sorry. That's all. That's okay. The, my concern is that pedestrians and vehicles are both using the same pathway. The, the vehicles are not able to traverse that at a slow speed that's safe for pedestrians to be. I think Council Members have a question, if you're okay with that. Uh -huh. yeah, Mr. Walkie, uh, I did notice and compliment, I guess, streets where they've got temporary signs of slowed down the traffic there at 25, and I've heard from citizens that's much appreciated. And I noticed they're still up. I think originally yeah, I they were maybe for the eclipse, but it's Yeah, I like nice. that. Yeah. yeah. I'd like some on local road, too. <laughs> um, the thing I have of concern is I was looking at the Public Arts Committee meeting minutes. Um, one of the items on their minutes was that they would present the committee's decision to hire people to prepare the public art master plan. I don't believe it's the public arts committee's 
ability to hire people. Okay, it would be their recommendation. Right. I think their minutes should reflect that, and I believe it's a staff person who does minutes, so that needs to be corrected. I think that's all. Okay, Councillor Kester. Um, yes, recently the library, Driftwood Libraries, Friends of the Library gave a ADA water fountain to the library. And this is very helpful for bicyclists going through because they're able to fill their water <coughs> bottles. And lo and behold, Travel Oregon has awarded that facility, the library, to be a bike-friendly stopping point because they also have um, access to charge cell phones and they're getting locks for their bikes, which they will be um, also renting to patrons for um, bike use. So I think that's an excellent recommendation from our library. Please. Uh, done, okay, go ahead. I believe we um, received some correspondence from the League of Oregon Cities um, about a scholarship fund. Uh, it was more funding that they would apply to. Them. They were asking for a contribution to the their scholarship fund. Right. Right. Okay, you're right. Yes. We budget city council money for city councilors to go to trainings. And um, in the last few years, we have not been using much of that budget. I'm wondering if we could contribute a little bit of those funds to help smaller cities who don't have the funds. All right. Um, did you all receive, get a chance to look at that letter I forwarded? So we all know what we're talking about? Councilor Anderson? Yeah. You look. I don't know what you look perplexed. <laughs> perplexed, yeah. Ready to attack? I don't know. Did you have any input on that? Yes, I, I read the. Uh, I don't know. The minute I say I'm really not interested in funding that, uh, you know, I'm a bad guy, um, but I'm not interested in not funding either. that. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm glad we have a budget for it and we need to continue budget to educate our own. Um, and I, I guess I would just as soon, um, you know, if it's burning a hole in our pocket, that we we get reach down beyond council and get other people educated in leadership opportunities in the city, that we take care of Lincoln City residents and future leaders and that kind of stuff. But that's just me. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, um, all done. To Okay. Yes, I also appreciate the conversation. Unless you have a question with her? Okay. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask it if um, there's any way to know if there's a real need for this, if people are requesting, you know, the funding or... Um, I I read in the letter that there was a need. Did they say how much they're asking for? I can't remember. Well, I think they said basically here's what we have provided, but not necessarily here's the need. Five percent of it. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that was the, the, the little stipend they wanted. But um, um, if I remember right, and who knows how much I remember, um, it, they said, "Well, we gave a twelve hundred dollar, we gave this much, this much, and this much." Um, but there wasn't anything that said we had to do it. it this is we anticipate. I just wanted to have the discussion. No, no, I appreciate that. it. Yeah. So I, I guess if you want to, I'm not seeing a lot of. What do you think, Councillor Walkie? You want to? Motion on that or no? You don't have to. Okay, that's fine. I don't hear any more. I just have a suggestion. Or would you like to find out a little bit more about it and come back like with a specific request rather than it being who knows how much and for what city? Well, is it something we could uh, impose upon you to find out about if there's what the need is from the League of Oregon Cities? I think that would be helpful. Would you like me to? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it because it's, if it's that important, raise the money. No offense to our League of Cities friends. Councilor Casper, you're up. Um, I don't have too much to say other than um, city manager gave me some information regarding regional broadband summit. And I think I would like to attend the video conference in Toledo on September 21st. Could you? expand on that? Um, well, this 
Is this going to be open to the public? No, this is this is not ours. This is we having our own. Um, this is from the state of Oregon. It seems like we're the leader, and um, this is by invitation only. It's in Albany. Um, there'll be partners there from uh, Emergency Technologies, Lane County Regional Fiber Consortium, Executive Dire Director for ICERT, and the Chief Technology Officer from the State of Oregon. So. Um, everybody's beginning to talk about broadband and how it can improve our communities. So this is kind of exciting since we'll be addressing that ourselves um, on Saturday. Good. I certainly appreciate you taking lead and following up on this. It's very, very helpful. I do plan to attend that in Albany. Oh, okay. Um, you could write it in. Okay, great. Do you think do you need, Councilor Anderson? Do you need funding? Is there funding with that? The, all the no, it's oh. part of our, our council. Yes, please. Okay. Our council governments. Uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Mayor, I have a couple of things. One, um, just to acknowledge uh, today is uh, September 11th and uh, remembering 2001, um, the lives lost and certainly the valor of the uh, so many first responders at that 9/11 uh, incident. Yes, sir. Um, and then secondly, um, I bat are going to be giving this wad of paper uh, to Kate and ask her to scan it and send it uh, to all of us. Um, it's a real um, nice uh, recap of the transportation uh, bill that was passed by the legislature. And as you know, I'm one of the committees on the Cascade or the uh, Council of Governments is the Cascade West. Um, area commissions on transportation of which I sit but this is a lot of frequently asked questions regarding the bill where the money is how it's applied because it's in fact kind of uh, uh, unusual for us as a state to finally come up with some money towards transportation and uh, I, I found this to be very helpful and we'll rather than share it with you in paper get it to you electronically and get that out Thank you. The other thing I have is, uh, as Ron has reminded, the new hospital groundbreaking tomorrow at 3.30. Um, also, tomorrow night, for those that are interested, um, there's actually a school board meeting in uh, Lincoln City at Ocean Lake Elementary at 7 p.m. And again, being a countywide school district, it's always nice when those other electeds come to our community, um, I'll be attending um, and supporting them, but also knowing more about our uh, schools. Thank you. Thank you. Got it. Sir? Uh, three things. One, I um, apologize for the uh, uh, my email to you guys this last couple, couple days. I'd given Ron my copies of the questions. But unfortunately, my own personal notes got mixed in with them. That's why it looks so crazy when you open that up. So anyway, um, yeah, at least I didn't say anything terrible <laughs> about anyone. Uh, 25 years ago, and I don't know when it changed, but we used to have, um, when someone irrigated a lot, uh, there was a deduction made for that in the summer, and it's quite easy to to figure out how much someone's using for irrigation. And currently, if someone uses water for irrigation, it also choose, choose, uh, shows a, a sewer side as well. So they're uh, paying for a, a sewer service that they're not, they're not getting. And I'm kind of wondering if there's a, a feeling among the council that, you know, to me, that's, that's, not, that's not a right thing. Uh, they're not using the service. They should not be paying for it. And uh, so, um, does the council have any feelings on that besides you, Mr. Anderson? You're on timeout. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just joking. Um, that's an old subject, um, just for your information, and one that um, we have passed, have not been able to come up with. Um, so, always looking for an idea, a couple of the the answers to the problem is get two meters, uh, buy a meter, and use one at your house, which you have, and then the other for if it's outside irrigation, 
um, so you can track it. Um, the other have been suggestions of averaging you know, winter months and stuff. Um, that got thrown out kind of because so many second homes and um, you know there's a high usage of water in the summer. Um, so um, so I, I'm open. I think there are um, folks, I, I guess, even if once we distinguished it, identified it, um, because someone chooses to, um, I, I guess they're billing, they're billing for water anyway, so it's the sewer aspect mm -hmm. that you'd forego, yeah. Well, the, I think the assumption is is that you're using equal parts, sewer and water, I, isn't it? Now, yeah, now. But it, uh, I'd be I interested mean, in putting it on a work session table if that's what you're suggesting to try to, you know, look at some. Make know. it equitable. Yep. Okay. That was number two. But that's just me. Anybody else have feelings yeah. on that? I'd like to yes, see that on a work session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Very cool. Mm. And so the next one, and I don't know if we ever came to a decision. I don't think we did, but. Um, uh, speed limit reduction uh, along particularly coast down into uh, Canyon Drive where there's uh, no room for pedestrians there at all. We still have a 25 mile an hour speed limit. And I was wondering, Ron, if you had, had found out any more about that? Not more than what I've told you, and that's that uh, ultimately it's regulated by the state. Um, they, um, let me see if I can remember the information. The, um, um, you can go down as low as 15 miles per hour, but those are very rare. They're usually associated with an alley. Um, they have some regulations. I can resend those to you. Um, if you want me to pursue that, um, it would be petitioning the state, and then they would evaluate that and make that determination. But it's rare that they're going to go below 25 miles an hour. Well, you already have a, a reduced speed limit, I think, down in Nelscott, don't you? Or, yeah, so somehow that happened. Okay. And for good reason, too. I mean, it's really peppered with people. We do have rogue citizens, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, if, if I can interrupt, because um, I remember talking with, with ODOT when they had their meeting out at Faith Baptist concerning the, the interchange work up there uh, at East Devils Lake Road. And my concern was 45 seemed to be an excessive amount of speed in that area. And they basically said, yeah, you can, you can petition us and, you know, present your stuff and things can be changed. So uh, I'd be on board with, you know, what you're recommending and a couple other places to boot. So maybe we can get together in another work session. <laughs> <laughs> Pick our maps and say, here's what we think. I, I think there's a lot of room for improvement in, in our speed limits. You know, so. If I could add um, a traffic light at the Miyatsu Post Office. I know I'm going to get killed one of these days. Okay, but we're still on yeah, Mr. Ward's. Okay. Yeah, and that, uh, Mr. Mayor, could, uh, staying on the speed limit, mm -hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken, that there was a piece of legislation this last session that our legislature passed specific for Portland that allowed Portland to make the decision on some streets. And I asked our representatives, why would you do it for one and not for all? Um, and the answer I got back is because nobody else asked. So one of the thoughts, uh, since we have a every year legislative assembly, um, our own representatives could do, submit a similar or attachment to existing or law, um, and you know, add to or amend that concept to take it out of the hands of ODOT and give it to the municipalities to regulate their own city speeds, street speeds, other than 101. Can I add something to that? I've also noticed on coast, if you turn on your headlights, it's very helpful. And even if you had maybe a little sign, lights on for safety, that really helps coming around the corners. And especially I noticed like over the Labor Day weekend and, and when it was really busy, it helped a lot. So I'm sensing Mr. Ward has opened up uh, something we'd like to discuss more. Over to you, Ron. Sounds great. We'll work that good by you, Mr. Ward. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anything else, sir? Is that it? Are you done, Kip? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? 
please. I um, I also wanted to remember 9-11, um, and um, I wanted to ask a, a follow-up question for one of our projects, which was the LID on Southeast 36th. Do we have any progress on that? I'll ask our public works director to come and address that one. Okay. I believe our um, start date for the sewer LID project on um, it's actually um, Northeast 36th Street will start within a couple of weeks and it's the contractor is saying that it'll only take um, about two to three weeks to finish so it'll be done before, before winter and we've had a few people come in already to sign up anything else that's it anyone else Okay, um, yeah, I hadn't thought about talking about September 11th, 2001, but it, it was one of those days that uh, not only, you know, was haunting and, and horrible, but my wife was there uh, in Washington, D.C., and the, the utter panic of not being able to get a hold of somebody when they're in these, these dire circumstances. And it, it, I think about that whenever we have these natural disasters now, and listening to, uh, I had a friend who uh, is living in Florida now who, we were getting daily or minute by minute updates, basically up on Facebook until power went out, and just that uh, I just want everyone to know we're we're all thinking of you, um, whether you're Houston or throughout Florida or Cuba or anywhere affected by these places. It's a, that common humanity that uh, um, you know touches us all deeply, and, and I thank uh, council members for bringing that up. And uh, it, it's a it's a tough time, um, a lot of time spent in prayer and. Uh, so I guess I have nothing else to say on that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, um, the Imagine Lincoln City. Um, while it's it's terrific that we have that there is, I hate to print more stuff, but there's nothing that says what that is, what it does, where to go. If we could have a little website address tagged on that, that would be uber helpful. Um, and then I, I just wanted to, and I don't want to get into a discussion tonight, because um, Mr. Apicello, you said we'd probably be having a work session concerning the uh, Smith versus City of Lincoln City uh, in, in the executive session. We'll discuss that. But um, we had a motion back on, I don't have the date in front of me. Uh, mo it was when we were rejecting this offer of settlement um, and, to offer, and to authorize Council Yen Schmidt to pursue common agreement. And I just want to, if maybe when we talk about that, you can talk about this. And so we, we're up to speed on that. I c oh, uh, uh, celebrate recovery tomorrow night, uh, Faith Baptist Church. Uh, I'll be cooking dinner there. Uh, it's uh, every Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Uh, it is an outreach program for uh, similar to a 12 steps. So if you have any uh, issues with alcohol, drugs, anything like that, or you know somebody who could be uh, helped by that, we also serve the community a hot meal. You don't have to come there for uh, any help unless you're just hungry and you need something to eat. So I always feel privileged to, uh, to participate in that. With that, uh, may God bless you all. May God bless Lincoln City. May God bless the United States. We are adjourned. And it's quarter to eight. Rock on, people. I'd like to reserve.